Our moderator for this session is Dr. Uh, Yi Jun Sun. He is the executive director of THI Consultants. 那我们是是就有请我们的主持人鼎汉国际工程顾问孙义俊执行董事到台上来就座 And also our panelists, we have Dr. Jeff Tan, Chairman and CEO of Myson Century. And also Casey Shi, founder and director of the Boar Global Unichip, and also Li Hong De,、uh, Li Hong Long, senior vice president of Da Tong, and also Mr. Raym Gulapudi, associate vice president of engineering for semiconductor IDU of Science. 那我们的语坛人呢，有这个世纪民主的。民生的汤宇芳董事长及执行长，创意电子的石克强创办人及董事，大同集团林和龙资深副总，以及我们的 Science Ram Golapudi 副总。那接下来呢，我们的时间就交给我们的主持人。And、uh, now, Mr. Sun, the time is yours. Thank you.、Uh, <coughs> thank you for Professor Yuan for a very stimulating speech. Uh, we have a very big and broad topic for this session. It's innovation, drive economic growth, productivity, and competitiveness. And Professor Yuan has already shed light on how to stay ahead with the right product service strategy. Uh, so uh, we, in this 60-minute session, I would like to invite、uh, our four panelists to each make a 10-minute、uh, comment on the subject of this session, as well as Professor Yuan's speech.、Uh, the first uh, uh, panelist is、uh, Dr. Jeff Tan, he is the chairman of Myson Century Corporation.、Uh, Myson Century is a leading fabulous semiconductor company, specializing in design, development, and sales of semiconductors and complete system solutions in the display and communications markets. Uh, his services and products also serve applications for automotive solutions, and that is why、uh, Myson Century is also a member of the Yulon Motor Group, and、uh, that shows the connection to TTIA, the host of today's event. Uh, so, uh, with that, I would like to、uh, turn over to Dr. Tan. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it's a big topic here that we're talking about. I think you know we, I heard about. I I just recently learned that you guys have changed your name to Scient, but、uh, it's a、uh, actually very reputable service company. So unfortunately, that、uh, you guys haven't really、uh, done a lot of business with the、uh, Taiwan local、uh, industry. But I think there should be a lot of opportunity. Okay, in response to uh, uh, Dr. Yuan's uh, uh, the talk,、uh, there was a. I was actually with IBM after I graduated for about five years, and there was a group called RAS. Okay, reliability, serviceability, availability, and serviceability, and all of the design. Uh, well, at the time, you probably know in the 80s that the IBM's mainframe is really the work engine for all the banks. Probably still a lot. Okay, so so the RAS group is the the one to decide whether a product、uh, can be released. Okay, so they have all of these rules about. Getting 98 percent co coverage of all the design. I mean, not just chip. Okay,、um, as John just、uh, introduced. In fact, yeah, we started off in、uh, 90s in the, as a、uh, fabulous company,、uh, but、uh, since about six to seven years ago, we、uh, moved into automotive. You know, we have CAN bus chips and stuff. But later in the last two years, we actually working very closely with High Tech, the、uh, automotive design company of the Yulon Group. Uh, uh, so we also Uh, we are also a tier one company de 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 de、uh, delivering products to、uh, the current Luxor model. If you look at the U U7 M7, the、uh, the touch key, touch key module in the center is actually de defined、uh, designed by us. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Bonanapu, I guess that is that right pronunciation. Just mentioned that the uh, uh, 
uh, their experience that experience covers from like one nanometer or nanometer, so to speak, all the way up to 80 meters, say about 100 meter. So you covers about 10 order of magnitude, okay, uh, or more, okay. And then for us, since we uh, uh, we started from chip design, then moved into uh, module design, system design. So we ca cover from about nanometer now to about maybe uh, sub meters, okay, maybe you know because that thing is about this big. But the other aspect though is that we uh, we need to cover from electronics, okay, uh, integrated circuit design all the way up to mechanical design, which is uh, actually a lot of uh, challenge for us, okay, and then. Uh, uh, and the requirement of, uh, in fact, you know, the telemetrics, not just telemetrics, we're talking about automotive, is very, very uh, tough, okay? It's not like consumer product, okay? So um, I guess the, because topic's too big, I can really just uh, say a little bit about our experience and then later save the uh, remaining time for, uh, for discussion, okay? Uh, so we <coughs> went into this product. Uh, we, the, the, uh, the automotive product, what we found out was that uh, a lot of the requirements are different, okay? Uh, for example, uh, like the, um, Professor Yuan just talked about, okay? If I sell something and then at the end of it, I, I don't need to think about recycle it because the customer simply throw it away, okay? In fact, that will make uh, companies like TSMC most happy, the, the happiest, and, you know, because they can sell a lot of semiconductors and they get thrown away and recycled, okay? Uh, but Unfortunately, the automotive industry is not quite the case, okay? So we, uh, uh, we found out that, uh, well, you have to worry about, worry about all the EMC EMI, uh, where the requirement is, is really 10 times, 100 times, you know, more stringent than the consumer product. And people don't throw stuff away. They come back to you, okay? Now, you talked about, uh, well, if you're in an, in an industry uh, where people talk about zero PPN, of course, that's really unachievable, okay? But but people are start still talking about it. I mean, you don't have to wait for, for the customer to return, okay? I mean, all along the way, uh, people are asking you for all the kind of the, uh, you know, how, how you upgrade this and that, okay? And then, so, our experience going through this, you know, from ele electrical engineering to, uh, uh, to, to covering mechanical engineering, you know, ID design, and, and the one experience we had with the very first product, like in the first version, it's only after we deliver the prototype we realize that we didn't have a good way of updating the, the software product, okay? Well, in fact, that design, we really uh, did it together with Hitech, the Yulong's design company. In fact, I think one of the, Dr. Chen is also here, okay? So it's really not something that a, uh, uh, a company like ours can do that, okay? So in fact, when we're talking about designing tomorrow together or collaboration, okay, I mean, the very essential uh, part of design is really the specs, okay? Who is really the owner of the specs? I think in this automat automotive industry, it's tough, okay? Because uh, the, uh, our customer, in this case, high tech, the auto design company, the specs that they specify don't really cover everything, okay? Because it's something new that they're thinking about. It's the spec is something that the designer will have to work collaboratively, collaboratively with the customer to come up with. You have to think for them about preventing failure or whatever that could happen in the field, okay? Uh, so there are a lot of very interesting stories just going through that. And for us, it's uh, uh, it really uh, opened my eyes after, you know, 20 some years in the industry, uh, going from electrical design to mechanical design, okay? So I think I'll just save the uh, remaining time for other panelists and then if uh, you know, audience have other questions, I'm, I'm delighted to uh, talk to you about it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tan. And our uh, second panelist is Mr. Casey Si. He is the founder and board director of Global Unichip Corporation, uh, the GUC. He is also the founder of Faraday Technology Corporation. Uh, GUC is the leader in flexible application-specific integrated circuit, which provides a comprehensive suite of flexible ASIC services. And GUC provides a combination of design capabilities and product 
production know-how through close partnership with TSMC for advanced communications, computing, and consumer electronics applications. Uh, with that, I would like to ask Mr. Si to give his comments. Th thank you for the introduction. Um, TTIA, the Xu Dong, Xu Li Sizang, Peng Xiaozang, and every valuable guest of this forum here today. Good afternoon. Okay, I'm very honored to have this opportunity to come here and give you some introduction about uh, how things can be approached in an innovative ways. I think Dr. Yan gave us a very good pointer. So when we think about services, value proposition, and understanding the customer's needs is very important in our service strategy and planning and executions. Um, over here, I like to um, use a subject called the paradigm shift of the semiconductor industry for the past 30, 40 years to introduce how as a design service, IC design service company, we can provide our services through a very innovative ways, through technology, through services, and through the execution of the processes. So I will uh, step down and do my presentation. Um, if we look at the, the early days of the semiconductor industry, actually, there are only two different companies, the system company and the IDM. So system company, you know, I think all those familiar names that everybody know, and some of them is already no longer exist in the market. But semiconductor companies are tons of them. And uh, so without saying anything. But the IDM actually does everything from the system specification to the IC layout and to through the wafer fabrications, packaging testings, and finished goods. So it's a, it's a complete enclosed processes. That's in the early days when we only know about mainframe or mini computers areas. Then, during the year 1990 and uh, through the year 2000, which we all recognize as the so-called PC areas, IBM invented the personal computers. And around the same time, uh, Dr. Morris Chen started his first innovation by carving out a piece of the IDM, the wafer foundry. So he, he, he took the wafer foundry out of the food chain, become an independent, separate, innovative approach, and formed the TSMC. And at that stage, you know, they are the, most of the system companies are still, still there, okay, besides a few uh, like Univac. If, if you all you know, if you know, you have heard this company, it is one of the big, famous, very successful companies existing, but it's no longer there today. Why? Because their business model cannot catch up with the progress of the industries. Okay, around the same time, um, I happen to also see the opportunity uh, of product technology service innovation. So I found that my first company in Taiwan Factory Technology in Chinese is Zhiyuan Keji. Okay. And that company was founded in 1993, and IPO'd in Taiwan Stock Exchange in 1998. And at one time, it's uh, also the, it's the, the stock price is the, the, in Taiwan called the Gu Wang, the king of the, the stock market, because the highest price 
Uh, anyway, um, so in the early days of the, the, the company is actually only doing the so-called traditional design services, only actually carving out, uh, if I go back there, it's only carving out the IC design, the actual layout of the ICs all of the entire food chain of processes. And, but anyway, there's a big change. Because of the wafer foundry, then actually enable the startup of many, many of the five accident houses. So sometimes the innovation can have a lot of unmeasurable impact to the industry for many years to go. I mean, TSMC is one of it, okay. And after the year 2000, we, we, I call this the, the, the post-PC area, okay? At that time, the IC requirement in the industry, if, if, if everybody remember the old PC, if you have taken out of the motherboard, you can see 30, 40, 50 different individual ICs perform individual single functions that are plugged on the PC board. So the PC is, is about uh, maybe uh, you know, 50 by 50 centimeters and quite thick, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a portable, no? okay? And uh, but in the PC areas, first integration, that's because of the market requirement, customer requirement, okay, is to integrate multiple ICs into one single chip. Uh, at that time, we called it the SOC, system on the chip, okay? Because of the system on the chip, so I happened also to see that uh, the business model of factory technology that's serving the customer needs is no longer can follow up with the market requirements. And uh, so I left the company after the IPO, started my second company in Taiwan, which is Global Unichip Corporation. Um, maybe I'll go back there. So Global Unichip actually founded in 1998, but the first two years of Global Unichip actually, I know what I need to do, but I don't know how to do it yet. So the first, actually, the, at that time I defined that I want to spend the first two years to figure out what do I need to do to provide the best IC design service for system on the chip, no longer a single function, single chip. So after, actually, I was planning for two years, but actually it took me four years to figure out the right way. So even the business models, the innovation, Thinkings also evolves as time goes on, as you understand the industry better, you understand the customer better, and then you adjust your thinking, uh, reposition your market positioning, and, and also th that's why you know Professor Yuan's value proposition is very important. You understand what you can offer the best value proposition to the market. Not okay. And actually, at that time, I understand that for, for a system on a chip design service company, okay, you not only need to have a, a good team to do design flow, chip layout, and so forth, you needed to actually understand the system level requirements. That's a step further beyond your immediate customer because at a design service company, my customers are either fabulous company or system company if they want to come us directly bypassing the, the fabulous design houses. So you really need to understand the system requirements. You really have to have a readily available, reusable IPs ready for your starting your design processes. And, and then you really have to have a a very good, specific, clear design specification. And then you start doing the IP integration, the, the, the chip design. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, when I saw the, this 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 program, this event today, I mean, immediately realized that uh, actually one of the hosts today signed is already a partner of our Globion Jeep company. We've been working together for three years. I think up to now, your service to us actually is in those three areas, IP integration, design, and the chip layout. Hopefully we can expand the collaboration on both up and down. Okay, anyway, and, and also in, in, by doing this kind of design services, you're not, not only in the, in the front end, you need to understand the end customer requirements, not just your immediate customers. But you also begin to realize that uh, you also have to work very closely with the foundry, with the packaging and testing companies to understand the process requirements. Because, you know, as of the SOC area, you wanted to, in our terminology, call the first cut success. That means that your first, once your design is done, your first trial run, production run, has to be successful. Otherwise, you lose another cycle of design cycles. That's roughly six months. Six months will kill a product in the market because the, because the market presentation, first in the market, is very critical in this area. So the, co the company being a design service company, you really have to understand all of those, including the, the you know, the, as I said, the, the, the process, specific process that your, your design is targeted to. That's the reason why due, uh, due to a mutual requirement and needs, TSMC took a majority ownership of global initiative that we can really work very closely together. So once you de define a product, you, you choose a particular process, then you can totally optimize your design to that particular process in that particular foundry. Okay, and uh, and also later on, as time evolved, this this time roughly about ten to twelve years, you begin to realize that uh, sometimes in order to achieve a system on a chip combination, you do not have to design everything into one single chip because the chip become very big, the yield will go down, the functionality will be any problems, and it will create a lot of heat. That so the heat dissipation become a big problems. So one alternative is you, the so-called uh, SIP in terminology, system uh, silicon in packaging, or you call it the uh, 2D or 3D. It actually package multiple chips together in one single packages. Okay, so technology evolves. Your service requirement also evolves. But anyway, in this area, so as you can see that as a design foundry of a design service company like uh, Tron Indian's Global Initiative, all of a sudden you begin to involve everything that an original IBM has to do. At least you have to know everything. But being a, a fabulous design foundry company. You do not have to own all those hardware. So I do not have to invest in wafer processing machines and factories. I do not have to own all those test machines and packaging. So actually, I define this uh, called a virtual IDM. You're still doing the design part, but you involve everything from chip to beginning to end. That's a business model innovation. Uh, again, also the service innovation. Okay, and um, I just threw this in to, to let everybody see how the industry heavyweight evolves. In the early days, uh, there are so many different kind of wa uh, wafer foundries. As we move the technology from 130 nanometers to 90, 65, 45, 40, 32, and 22, 20, actually nowadays is 12, 14 nanometers. Okay, like Apple's iPhone 6. iPhone 6 is actually using 16 nanometer, processing the 8, 
eight processors by TSMC. As you can see, the IDMs going, began going to FabLab or FabLess. Today, uh, uh, I have to apologize to uh, UMC because I left it, their name out. It's by mistake. UMC is still, still in this business today. There's only six companies left. I also like this opportunity to introduce everybody who is not familiar with the Taiwan semiconductor industry. Taiwan actually have a complete food chain. You, you may call it ecosystem as well. Food chain about these IC industries. There are about uh, more than 260 IC design houses in Taiwan. Uh, more than 15 wafer foundry manufacturing, you know, wafer foundry uh, or typical IDMs or particularly only for memories, including the packaging, uh, mask, chemical, uh, metal materials. And, and also 37 packaging related and testing related companies. Of course, uh, downstream, all the applications you can think of. And every industry needs an ecosystem to evolve the uh, good service, complete products. Okay, this is the typical ecosystem for inquiry circuits. And more important, and you know, also again, borrow Dr. Yuan's uh, the presentation. Okay. Uh, you have to understand the customer needs, the market needs, because sometimes your customer might not be the end customers. You, so you have to multiple levels of customer needs. Um, nowadays, it's no longer technology driven, it's actually uh, uh, application driven. I remember all this. IBM invented this big uh, mainframe mini computer, so they just put the market on the place. You figure out what you want to do, how to use it. You write your program, you write your software. Today is different. Everything designed based on the application needs, I'm sorry. And back in early days, the almost 80 percent, okay, two more minutes. The almost entire industry that uses uh, the semiconductors belong to the personal computer. Okay, I remember earlier I said that the PC area and the post PC areas, the the division between the two areas are actually is using the application of semiconductors. At the PC area, the application of P, of the semiconductor used for PCs are more than fifty percent, from hundred percent down to year two thousand, and then down to less than fifty percent. That's why when we call the post PC areas the application using semiconductor no longer dominated by PCs, but it's start by other applications. So you can get the application evolving from personal computer to global mo uh, mobile, uh, 2G mobile to internet applications. And we are now in the 3G mobile communication stage and actually began and deeply evolved into the mobile internet applications. And from last year and now, I call it just the new SOC or the IoT areas. And so being in, a, in, a, in, in this industry, being in the IC design service company, we have to continuously learning the new things, learning the new tricks, and also evolve, we evolve with our, our, our services and supports and technology together with the needs of the market. Um, this one I threw in, I decided to throw in this one here. I'm sorry that I did not have time to uh, translate them into English, but I will speak in English. Those are the few things I see that's happening, okay. Oh, sorry. Number one, I think uh, IDM, the, 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 sorry, IDM, eventually they will all die. Okay, unless they figure out how to evolve their business model into more cultural application. They can, you cannot just generate the hardware and say, hey, 
this is my best hardware, buy it and figure out how to use it. My, my, sorry. And then I also believe that the semiconductor industry chain is no longer lead by process. It will also be lead by applications. For example, TSMC is working so hard to figure out how to reduce the power consumption, how to increase the performance, how to control the yield, how to reduce the cost. That's all application driven, okay? And, and, and the third, I see that, uh, I think that's kind of the Morse law, if you heard about it, I think it didn't get to the point that it's actually the technology progress is, is it's all just jumped over the Moore's law. Moore's law says every 18 months you, you double your speed and applications. So actually right now, almost every, every 10 to 11 months we double our, 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 our speed. It's already beyond the Moore's law. So again, the IC integration no longer that we put cramp everything into one single chip. So I, I predict that 3D IC that's a packaging multiple chips into one single application will become very critical for the future processes. And the packaging and the process and testing will have to be working together very, very closely to meet that goal. Because the, I'm talking about the a traditional IC, when we send the IC for packaging, our, our requirements 90% year will be, will be happy. But now it has to be close to 100% yield because I'm packaging several chips together in one chip. The total co cost of the, the several chips probably is close to 100, 100, 100 US dollars. So one chip failed, I lost one, $100, so no longer one, two dollars. So yield has to be closer to 100% in packaging and testing. And I also see that fabulous companies that will come go from application specific standard product, standard product going into ASIC, and, and they also have to embed the software into their chip, uh, provide a complete system level solution rather than just hard solutions. I also believe that the design service company like us or Scient will continue to grow in the future. And from the system point of view, as the, uh, everybody can see from computer to to iPad, to handheld, to wearable devices, and IoT will be going for the future. So as you can see that, that, that as time goes on, okay, innovation is everywhere. You have to move on with your innovation, with, with your mind. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you, Mr. Su for an uh, enlightening uh, summary of the evolution of semiconductor industry. Our third panelist is uh, Mr. Ram Gadaputi. He is the Associate Vice President of Scient, uh, in charge of engineering for semiconductor IDU, as well as managing chip design teams in various places in the USA and India. Uh, before joining Scient, he held management positions in National Semiconductor, Lucent, and VLSI Phillips. Mr. Kalut Pudi, yes. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored to be part of this uh, session. And um, as uh, we just heard, the semiconductor industry is uh, very unforgiving uh, and we cannot tolerate any errors uh, because the cost is so high, especially in the advanced nodes that we are looking at. Um, actually, I'm going to tell you a small story. Uh, this is in uh, mid-80s. Um, as a young engineer, I was working um, in a company called Burns Research. It's a fundamental research. That was my first job. And uh, Dr. Burns, who worked directly under uh, David Cernoff, who invented the color television. So I was very fortunate to work for him. And uh, one day he said, hey, the semiconductor industry is going to be the next 
really revolution and we need to be part of it. There are already players that are doing, like National Semiconductor, and uh, what they're going through is the cost of the redos and also the time uh, for the silicon to come out. In those days, it was taking about 45 days to really see the first silicon, around 40, 45 days. How about we go do, build a small machine that can fast prototype may not be in the volume, but few chips in a given day. So then he started a company called Lhasa Industries. Uh, I was fortunate to be one of the few engineers, first engineers in that. So the innovation part of it is, fundamentally the cost associated with uh, actually producing the silicon, and how do we go eliminate these by using the fast prototyping, the cost of redo, we can minimize. So Dan Dooley, who was the vice president uh, at National, uh, started that uh, company. And um, what we did is we built this small machine that can actually fast prototype few chips in a given day. We do the metallization of the interconnects via, and then be able to take that chip and test it. If the design is functional, then we take that design into the volume production. And it worked very well. And we were doing, in those days, the one micron interconnect. So we had our difficulties uh, going through the fundamental research, but we were able to actually do the, do the chips. Without us really realizing, somebody else was working in the backyard of FPGAs, which has the similar type of an approach where you can take your design, fast prototype, and actually test it. So the moral of the story after we found out going through about three years of this innovative, excellent idea, somebody else were thinking in a different way, but yet creative way of prototyping these designs. So ultimately, the cost of this, our machine, is in the order of about few million dollars versus volume production FPGAs, they were able to come into the market and do the same thing. So the point that I want to make is for any innovation, there is a time domain aspect. We need to be there entering the right way at the right time so that we will be able to actually add the value to the ecosystem. So fundamentally, the timing is so essential in how we do things. The ideas could be very innovative. They may be very premature into the market. So from a product development side, so there are ways of looking at it, how the ecosystem, what is going to happen, where do we bet, how do we actually look at these things, where, are the, where is the ROI is going to come for us. There is an element of uh, analysis and also the fundamental thought process that we need to be going through. Now I'll say a couple of uh, words about Scient as an organization. Um, we are basically uh, exposed into many different verticals as such. We service into aerospace, transportation, medical, consumer. Um, so the exciting part for me uh, as an engineer uh, <coughs> No matter where you look at it, the silicon component is there. We cannot escape from semiconductors. And so the way that uh, we are seeing in science, how do we actually take our capabilities of the semiconductor development with the domain knowledge of these different verticals? And how do we enter into these markets at the right time so that we will be the valuable partners in the ecosystem. So with that, uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Um. Thank you, Mr. Gwalapudi, uh, for sharing the time dimension in innovative applications and development. Our uh, fourth and last speaker, uh, uh, last panelist, is Mr. Honglong Lin. He is the senior vice president of Datong Company. Uh, no need to introduce Datong in Taiwan because 
Every one of us has a Datong appliance in our home. However, uh, Datong has evolved in a uh, multidisciplinary uh, group of uh, various businesses focusing on the development of advanced technologies, including telematics applications. Uh, Datong also specializes in the ODM and OEM business and serves customers on a global basis. Mr. Lin? Thank you for your introduction. And uh, I'm very happy to join this uh, event. Uh, of course, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm not talking about the history of the Datong because that would take two hours. And uh, <laughs> maybe if you are interested, we have a museum in our headquarters. We start from 1918. So four years later, we are going to Century Company. Uh, to, uh, you know, the, you know, Datong, uh, uh, I mentioned we have produced a lot of home appliance. But today, you know, before I, uh, I, I joined this uh, meeting and I had a copy from the uh, uh, Professor Yan and look at the PSS and we are trying to find what the product of our Datong can put this in strategy. Uh, so uh, actually, fortunately, we have a product here. We call it the digital meters, okay? You know, the Taiwan power company, for the, for the electric consumption in Taiwan, 66% come from 30,000 customers, which is factories and uh, you know, the uh, commercial buildings. The rest of, say, 37%, is occupied by the uh, housing only. So we start, actually two years ago, we Tachong set up, uh, cooperate with the TPC, Taiwan Power Company. We set up a, 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 the whole system for the high voltage one, actually running two, uh, already uh, two years. Now we start from the low voltage one. But the, the most important thing is, you know, the, for Taiwan Company, we have, you know, maybe we have a, a say, uh, uh, 10,000 houses that we can only sell 10,000 meters. <laughs> Maybe eight years later, you have to replace one. So we had to find some way to push our product to the market in some other way application. So right now, we try to actually we are find already in Tatong, we also have a, a developer company. So we have uh, tried to set up a so called uh, intelligent houses or, or so or smart in house, smart, smart home. So we call it meter after meter because the first meter has come from TPC. Then we can set up a meter, digital meter in your home as a platform to be a, a smart home. Okay, so we can check your, your home appliance, refrigerator, your TV set, and whatever the power consumption. You can, you can, you know, very easy to the access the the data, okay. So it's it it's actually it's uh, it's a very important for for the home houses because then you can then from those data you can you know to decide the uh, the cycle of the uh, uses of the time and also the what kind of the the uh, uh, what the the producer. Well, that's very important for us because we also ref produce the refrigerator. For example, when you when you're talking about the, 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 the consumption of your home, then uh, the power consumption of your home it, with uh, your neighbors, and your neighbors, oh, okay, my, uh, my refrigerator from the air, air producer, then and, and save a lot of energy. So, you know, that's a very important for the uh, 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 component makers. Up here, uh, we are talking about the PSA. Actually, we are doing right now because, you know, as a platform of the, of the, uh, uh, the smart home, Actually, right now we have a small building right now, and we are we are working for that. It will be finished about uh, uh, next May, and the small home will be start from next year. And what we are doing is because it's a new business, and uh, we have to offer a service to our customer, not only just con a component, okay, not only just a product of the TV set or refrigerator or even air conditioner, right? So we are actually we we start to to how to do the service 
the, our customer to learn. Actually, basically, they need is of course it's uh, it's comfortable, uh, and then also the uh, security. Okay, of course you have to consider the economic because you have got more service, you have to pay more. So we have the balance for that, and we have a different you know uh, 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 class of the of the uh, household. For example, so we can right now we are doing is ask our in our our colleague from the workers, the medium class uh, uh, employee and high class employee what they need. If you are staying home, you are, you are offering such kind of product, what you need. Because to, be, to us, it's very important. Uh, and we collect all those data, and we are going to, to, to collect. For example, we have to call, of course, we can call some, some gateway makers, and even the I.O. put them together in one panel. Okay, in one panel. You know that in Taiwan, every house or apartment, we have a uh, a power cabinet, which is the power outside from TBC, then you have uh, lots of breaker to control your, you know, different uses in your home, right? But right now we try to integrate those to one unit, okay? And it looks beautiful. And maybe the panel is a screen, not that just uh, not a steel, you know, panel. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think that's very important for us because we start from such kind of concept uh, already, and I hopefully uh, uh, in 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 the near future we can you know uh, to you know consult the Professor Yan for more information about the uh, how to do our product to the our customer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lin, for sharing Datong's PSS example in smart homes. Uh, we still have about 10 minutes left in the uh, panel discussion uh, session. Uh, I, I would like to ask our four panelists, uh, in, in light of global uh, application of product service strategies, uh, do you see opportunities for, for uh, Taiwan to cooperate with India or, or uh, companies like Scient? Uh, in cooperation with Taiwan companies in developing and enhancing our global competitiveness. Uh, Dr. Tan? Yeah, I, I, I certainly can see that. Yeah, I, I was wondering, in fact, I was surprised that you guys are here. Uh, you know, just now. I mean, you should have been here maybe ten years ago. Okay. No, well, yeah. I, th I think definitely because uh, when you talked about design, you know, you talked about specs. In fact, why there are so many design, there are a lot of design going on. It's because stand standards cannot satisfy the customers. Okay. So everything is about customization. I mean, so for that, you have to have design. You have to have variable design, or people even talking about, you know, uh, custom made a car for you color or whatever. I think, you know, if you look at all of the uh, uh, small uh, internet shops doing clothing, okay, I mean, there are some examples here in Taiwan too. So I think there should be a lot of opportunity. I think in the past, uh, you know, I'm, I'm associated with the uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Industry Association, the TSIA. Uh, the TSIA had, uh, uh, I think they have arranged, grouped, groups to visit India, uh, and some people have actually set up companies there in the past. But uh, uh, I think still, you know, between countries, there are a lot of customs and whatnot that people don't really understand. And uh, uh, so, f simply put, I think there should be a lot of opportunities, but uh, you guys probably need to spend more marketing effort to, you know, uh, understand the companies here and, and let them know what you can do and what sort of business model that, that's really involved. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of outsourcing here, but, but certainly I think it's a, it's a good way to go. Yeah, and you guys should be here some time ago, yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tan. Mr. Xu? The answer is yes. I think uh, actually back in 19, 95, when I was with Faraday, I already recognized that there's a lot of good engineers in India. 
a lot of resources in India actually have formed a design service branch in Hyderabad, their headquarters today. Uh, at one time, I grew up to 50 engineers over there. And nowadays, uh, even in uh, later on at the Global Institute, we tried many different ways to utilize the resources in India. Um, but because of the culture, because of distance, because of the management, uh, we're, we're not very successful. But we find that our current re working relationship with science uh, is, is working very well. If you have an organization who can do everything for you, all you have to do is that uh, this is what I need, please go do it. They, they, they get it done for you. Why bother to do your own uh, operations over there? So uh, I, I really, in our experience, I think is, this is a good timing to work with uh, Indian company, not just them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Su. Mr. Kalapudi. Um, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the reason is uh, India has the, the tremendous amount of uh, the talent pool. Um, just to give you, uh, today we have a new uh, prime minister that uh, came to uh, in power, that is uh, Narendra Modi. Somebody asked him, um, you know, we hear that uh, India has a lot of this uh, black magic and uh, snake charmers. Um, <coughs> so is that really true? And uh, so Modi had to really think about it and said, you know what, that is really true. Nowadays, we are not playing with snakes, we are playing with mouses. And um, so if you look at uh, the India, the amount of engineering talent, the young generation, there is way too much out there. It is how we harness that energy and actually utilize it is basically, uh, there are, the opportunity space is way too much. And I'm really excited uh, that part of it. And um, uh, there is a lot we can do with uh, Taiwan market and the India uh, ecosystem of engineering. Thank you, Mr. Galapudi. Uh, Mr. Lin. Uh, I'm not saying yes or no, but I just give you an example. And yes or no, you judge that, OK? Uh, two years ago, we uh, visited India, and we offered so-called solar pump. Uh, okay, and then we try to mainly for irrigation, you know, it's for the agriculture. Okay, but when sent to uh, to set to the uh, uh, customer, actually, he has a great innovation. He, uh, you know, he add up another so-called purification system, simple one, and then this company start to selling the water. Okay, <laughs> okay, clean water. Okay. You can drink it, okay. So it's a uh, it's a uh, still based on your innovation. It's very important, yeah. Uh, of course, at the in India, we try to you know it's very difficult to say the home plant here uh, because you know your people still use a, a main it's uh, the rice, right? So actually, our rice cooker in Taiwan market share ninety two percent, and and I think everyone have a Tatung rice cooker. <laughs> So I have to find uh, some way, you know, to uh, to to push our product, because you know you have a uh, you know 600 million people. So that's <laughs> that's a, that's a lot, and uh, we have to find some way, you know, to uh, to, to use that PSS and you know to uh, of course we cannot cook every to cook the food the rice for everyone, you know, but we have some way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Lin. And uh, finally, finally uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, Professor Yan, would you like to say some feedback to the uh, comments, comments made? Uh, do you mind I sit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but thank you for wonderful panelists sharing. And uh, uh, I learned a lot from each of your uh, sharing. Uh, because I'm not from the semiconductor, I mean, uh, I'm not from the, the domain. So, uh, for example, the but from the big picture, from the big picture, I believe 
uh, regardless your your customer are B customer or C customer, because I mean, uh, service supposed to have uh, B two B and B two C. Just mentioned by that, uh, uh, the 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 uh, C uh, chairman Shi, you have uh, this is a trend that you the better to think of. If you are the B2B, you the better to think about B2B to C, to think about what will be your clients, customers' needs before you think about your product, your design, or you, whichever things you are working on. Otherwise, um, in Taiwan, uh, we have a lot of component technologies. But the problem is we do not see too many uh, what we call useful, desirable solution. The problem is because, I mean, even you for you are uh, working for B2B, you, I mean, pay less attention to what your clients, how are you going to help your B to, to uh, I mean, to, to get the mass seeds market from on behalf of your client. This is truly important. This is truly important because, I mean, uh, not from the uh, industry of semiconductor, there is a local I mean, uh, printing company called Jianhao Inshua. I'm not sure whether you heard about that. Jianhao Inshua, different from the industry of yours. Of, uh, but, I mean, even this is the traditional I mean, printing uh, company, manufact uh, printing company, but he, the, 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 the manager already transformed itself, okay, from not just serving its client, whichever, I mean, past potential business opportunity his client is able to pursue, he is going to help the client to acquire uh, the, the, the potential business opportunity, regardless, of, I mean, how much I mean, effort or uh, from the techn technology investment or service investment or human resource investment, even though the, 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 the chance of the success is only 50%, but he's willing to invest this kind of effort to help its uh, client to acquire the opportunity, even though he's only doing the manufacturing stuff rather than selling the direct product or service to the, 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 the client, uh, to the, the end customer, C, uh, C's end customer. So this kind of mindset, I believe, is truly important for our manufacturing industry, regardless that you are from energy, ICT, hardware, software. Otherwise, we cannot have our own desirable solution. This is not just for, for us, for everybody, I mean, uh, also from the global, this is the global um, uh, economy trend. Okay, this is my, my comments. So I'm willing to, I mean, I mean on behalf of the National Genji University, um, uh, we often can claim that we are, when, when, whenever you would like to see customer needs, cultural, customer, soft power, we, I believe National Genji uh, I'm not selling, okay, but <laughs> but I mean, National Gender University uh, have a lot of talent regarding soft power rather than uh, the the hot hot power. Okay, thank you. I'd like to add a comment after Dr. Yuan's speech. Uh, Dr. Yuan, as long as you are a Chinese, you are part of our industry. I'll tell you why. In silicon, you know, the, in semiconductor industry, the key word is IC, right? But in Silicon Valley, if you talk about IC, there are two schools of thought. Some people think it's in semiconductor. Most people think it's Indian and Chinese. <laughs> oh, really, I'm not joking, it's really true. Because without Indian and Chinese, there will be no Silicon Valley today. Back in 1970s and 1980s, the group of people, engineers, that created the Silicon Valley, including tons of Chinese and Indians. Actually, the total number of people, more than the Native Americans, are involved in during that time frame. So, so Indian and Chinese are born together. You're part of our domain, and we and India can work together in many different ways. Thank you. <laughs> Let me add one thing. You know, you probably you guys probably see Anli's you know the the latest film. 
You know why it's so success successful? Because it's made by a Chinese director, and it's an Indian story. The Life of Pi. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you, Professor Yan. And uh, on that note made by Mr. Si and uh, Dr. Tan, I would like to uh, open it to the floor. We have a 10-minute open Q&A uh, period. Uh, please, um, anyone has any questions for the speaker or any of the panelists? If no questions, then I would like to ask a question. <laughs> can, can somebody comment why you are here today? Anyone? <laughs> That's uh, kind of typical for a Chinese audience. Uh, it, it takes a long time for the first question to pop up. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the case in India or uh, uh, elsewhere. So I'll, I'll answer a few questions. Yes. If you look at the early days, you had. If you look at the early days, you had say a uh, Motorola was a was a uh, was a company that made the product that made the semiconductor, that owned the fab that made the semiconductor and and a lot of other things down the uh, supply chain or uh, uh, down the food chain. Then Motorola spun off Freescale as a, as a uh, semiconductor company, and then Freescale uh, outsources their manufacturing now to either TSMC or UMC or whoever. Do you think that uh, specialization will still continue? Are we going to see more, uh, you know, the, the, will the industry get broken down into smaller and smaller pieces in terms of specialization, though the, the size of each of these specialized companies, like obviously say a TSMC is very, very large, but from the scope will it start getting further and further narrowed? Because if you look at even the, the um, at, at the 130 nanometers when you showed the list of companies, there are a lot of those companies. Now, a lot of them have become something else. Some of them have died out, but a lot of them have become something else, like a Motorola or a Philips or a Siemens or, and so on and so forth. So do you think more of this will happen going forward? That's a very complicated question. But the answer is actually, let me speak in Chinese first. In uh, I'm saying that the world, many things are, uh, as time goes on, if you're too much integration, then you will become disintegration. Once you, you have done enough disintegration, you have to come back to the, uh, integration. L like the paradigm shift that I presented earlier, you already saw two cycles of you know, separation and then integration, separation and integrations. And I definitely think that the smaller the pieces, the more innovation you can throw in quickly and see return quickly. But in order to grow, in order to propagate the innovation to become a real life useful product, you need uh, massive volumes to support you. So you have to go back to integration. So it's really an ongoing thing, back and back and forth. It depends on the timing, the, the location, the application, and the people involved. Okay. And I still won't let go. So, so Enough advertisement for your companies. I really like to hear some comments from the audience. Why you are here today? Maybe, if Chairman, you can point to somebody, ask them to answer. All right. Anyone would uh, like to volunteer? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll pick the one. Uh... Oh, okay. I'm comf. I'm from the HTC Taiwan. Uh, firstly, I answer why I'm here. I just uh, may be invited by your guy, Kevin. We have talked something about Indian engineering outsourcing in Taiwan. And also, luckily, I also worked for Philips Semiconductor in year 1995 to year 2004. So we have some connection. Also, I come from NCCU MBA. So I also have some connection with the professor here. <laughs> 
And my question to you is uh, for the semiconductor. Uh, since uh, the Android to the market, we are the, we are the pioneer of the Android phone, and uh, we know the importance of the open source. So in the discussion section with the UN journey ahead, we have some discussion of how your company can help the Taiwanese company like uh, uh, MediaTek or HTC or some other companies to, to well use the Europe open source and uh, to show them the lead time of the semiconductor development. And in the meanwhile, there are some more increased the importance of the vulnerability of the uh, security personal information. So how you just implement all this into your engineering service to Taiwan. I think that's the major purpose you want here and how to explore your market. Okay, I will try to answer as much as I can. Um, so fundamentally, if you look at the uh, like H, you know, HTC, where you said you have this open source forum whereby you know you can develop the application space. So if you look at, uh, um, I'll just give you an examples of uh, the Microsoft, Google. Um, fundamentally, the companies that have done very well in the industry they have taken advantage of the India engineering centers in the overall development, like Microsoft heavily depended on uh, in developing their uh, software side of it. With that, we have, as I kind of mentioned early on, um, th there is tremendous of amount of engineering uh, resources that are available in the ecosystem. And Scient as an organization, um, we have close to thousand plus engineers in the software side of uh, our uh, development center. So what we are going to be looking at it is now that we have a focused approach into this particular market, we're going to partner with uh, people like you to really understand your needs and build the expertise that will make you successful, right? So that is as a higher level answer. Obviously, the devil is uh, in the details. Those are the next steps that we are going to be working um, with the you know, strategic partners uh, to really address the needs of the industry here. So especially in the case of mobile phone, uh, the software side is uh, something there is a request that came. Uh, Kevin was telling us, so we're going to you know, take it back into the organization and come back to you with the right set of solutions. Um, so that's uh, that's about uh, the the generic answer that I can give at this point. The details will follow um, as we you know progress. All right, thank you. Uh, our time is up. Uh, these chairs are very comfortable, uh, but we have to close this session. Uh, Please join me in uh, thanking our speaker and four panelists. And thank you for your participation. Thanks.